This is my first attempt at an ocean scene diorama. And as usual, I'm using extruded polystyrene. I'm cutting it with the Hot Wire Foam Factory sculpting tool, which is a very useful bit of kit for carving out landforms. And I just keep carving bits and pieces of the foam until I'm happy with the general cliff shape. Now, I want it to be fairly high and I'm leaving a space there for the bed which I cut out earlier on here, the seabed there, which later on I'm going to carve into waves. But for the time being, it's all about the cliffs. And I'm using Gorilla Glue, and while I'm piecing it together like a puzzle, I'm actually using cocktail sticks to hold the bits into place. It doesn't matter if it's not entirely flush or anything at the moment because it's all going to be covered in sculpt mold later on. So here we go, here's the Gorilla Glue going on. I damp it first and then squish the Gorilla Glue on and then I weigh it down because it expands as it cures and foams. So it pushes the foam apart so what you need to do is weigh it down or at least clamp it or something. And I'm piecing it all back together as it was before. And that's me just pressing in the cocktail sticks there. Right now, I'm drawing out the general wave shape I want on that other piece of foam that I cut out of the second board. And then I start to carve that out with a knife. At this point, I realized the first knife I was using was far too stiff. You need a bit of a flexible knife. Carve out the wave shapes. What you're after is some natural looking waves all flowing in the, the right direction. Pay attention to uh, photos online. Make sure you know what waves look like when they come into the sea, uh, into the land. They don't all break in different directions. They're all generally going in one direction. And now I'm using watercolor paper. I might use toilet paper next time because it's easier but this I wanted nice rounded wave shapes and I thought this was a good way of doing it so I cover the seabed foam in Mod Podge matte diluted and then I press over the watercolour paper it doesn't matter if it cracks here I keep going over it with a bit of Mod Podge keep squishing it into all the gaps here making some very realistic foam shapes and as I said it doesn't matter if it cracks um, because I'm using acrylic corking here to cover up those cracks and also to fill in any bits I wasn't happy with to re-sculpt bits. Acrylic corking is basically decorator's cork this is a brilliant white one of course for this it doesn't really have to be brilliant white but that's what I've got and I'm trimming it around the edges now so that it fits neatly back into my cliff structure. There she goes. And at this point I realised I wanted the cliffs to be even higher. So I made them even higher. Now a bit more trimming. And then I glue the C down with more Gorilla Glue, which is running out at this point, but doesn't matter because it sticks like you know what. Right. Sculptor mold, which is the standard stuff I use for building up the landforms over the foam, just smoothing it all, all down, making it look more like a natural cliff structure. Applying it fairly thickly because, as I've said in previous videos, it probably will never dry if it goes on too runny. And now some plaster of Paris because I'm making some rocks from Woodland Scenics rock moulds which I use on pretty much every diorama. I make a variety of rock moulds, um, of rocks rather, because I don't want a repeating pattern. I don't want people to look at it and go, oh, that's the same rock as over there. You know, you want a variety of them. And then it's just a case of piecing them together as you want. It doesn't matter if they're not perfect, if they crack as they come out, because they're all just going to be stuck on here. And then they're going to be kind of pieced together and blended together with plaster of Paris. So I'm using the same plaster that I made the rocks from, because that means that the paint that I use later applies equally over 
both the rocks and the blending plaster. And I'm carving that blending plaster now to match the rocks. So paying attention to stratus lines, etc., and just smoothing it, but also making little jagged edges to make it look natural. Adding a few more rocks around the cliff base. Now for the acrylic washes. So this is a, a slightly grey black for uh, the first bit, which I rubbed off the highlights of the, the rocks, the, the top edges of the rocks. So it just goes into the fissures. Then a bit of yellow and burnt umber, it was yellow ochre actually, which I spot over um, probably two thirds of the rocks and then dry brushing it with some white. So I just catch the edges. And now I'm going to paint the base of the sea, which I use a kind of very dark greeny blue. And then paint the top of the rocks, uh, the top of the cliff with an earthy brown. And now I'm highlighting the waves with uh, a lighter blue colour, some kind of lagoon colour, I guess. And then a bit more highlight. Um, to be honest, you could kind of skip a lot of this because later on I'm going to be covering most of it with white water anyway, but this was just in case, I don't know, I thought maybe I'd miss some with the white water or maybe what it would show through, maybe it'd be more translucent, but well, who knows. Anyway, I thought it looked quite nice at this stage and you're kind of thinking, oh, is it going to look any better than this? Should I, should I just stop here? But then, no, you've got to add the white water because otherwise it looks like, well, a bit rubbish when you come back the next day and realise it looks nothing like water. Anyway, going over it with some glazing medium by Liquitex to give it that glossy, watery, wet look. And now here's the white water, which I use resin filler, glass resin filler, white acrylic, and a heavy body gloss structure gel by Winsor & Newton. And this creates a very thick paste, but you can apply it all over the waves and even make all these three-dimensional splashes up the rocks, uh, as well as foam on the top of the waves. And it ends up looking very realistic if you go over it and kind of remove some of it with a pick or something like that, or at the end of a paintbrush, just kind of spotting over it to try and bring back some of that wave underneath while leaving some of that foam on top. And I went over it here with a bit more uh, gloss gel tinted with a bit of blue to just soften the, the white water a bit more because it can look quite harsh. But as I say, you just need to chip it away, pick it away, add it here and there. I'm using a bit of cotton wool here to add more of the sea kind of foam as it splashes up the uh, up the rocks and some polyfiber for the very fine spray at the end. And I think it turned out rather nicely. And now it was time to add the dried soil and grout to the top of the cliffs, uh, which I sealed with isopropyl alcohol and then some scenic glue. And I added woodland scenics fine and coarse turf. I didn't use any static grass on this diorama because I thought it would look too lush and I wanted it to look more windswept, sea swept, etc. Look at those waves, I think they turned out really nice in the end. I think next time I do an ocean diorama it'll look even better because I'll actually know what I'm doing right from the start. Don't forget to subscribe, thanks ever so much for watching again, cheers!